Hi, Jack. Uh, this is Srinivas. It looks like many people are missing today. Um, so, uh -huh. kind of focusing on choosing the competition. Um, given a lot of people haven't shown up, maybe I'll just uh, post to Slack and ask uh, on the channel and ask people to vote. Do you have any preferences on which of the competitions you'd like to? For us to participate in next. Um, I, at the moment, I don't actually have a preference. I'm still looking at uh, those ones that you mentioned uh, that are on cargo last week. And to be honest, I'm yeah. happy to participate in uh, any of them. Okay. Yeah, and post uh, usually few more people show up, but uh, for some reason, I don't think uh, it is the two of us. I think the, there are about five total that um, I had posted, about three on Kaggle and two on different platforms. The three on Kaggle are one is, you know, the ongoing or a repeat, uh, the pet selection one, which I would think that people, it's a good one, but the reason people may not, you know, who have been in the community, they may not be excited about that is we have done classification, image classification based problems before. So, and since it's precisely just that, so people may want to do something different. Uh, yeah. That might be the reason the, you know, the pet, choice may not be uh, preferred by some. Uh, I would like to do something different too, although it's a good one to get started if you're getting started on uh, Kaggle. The other two are one is this um, segmentation competition. Um, and again, we have done segmentation before, but at the same time, you know, what a, uh, in a different context. So this is kind of cell-based, yeah. biology-based uh, competition. So that might still be interesting. And there have been some advances in segmentation techniques and stuff. So people may be interested in that. Um, the other one that Steve posted, I saw as well, which is the predicting currency values, if you will. Um, that one yeah. may be of interest to multiple people. Um, Primarily because we haven't yet done a time series competition. And that one is a time series competition. So that would be interesting to participate in just because we haven't tackled time series. We have done one NLP, um, one classification, one segmentation, and um, another one which is audio sound based uh, again classification but uh, it was based on sound recording so that was kind of interesting and so we may have people preferring the crypto one and of course the other two which are not on kaggle are one that yuri talked about last week which is the satellite imagery the main problem with that and i don't know whether any whether you have had a chance to look at the data size for it and stuff. And also the second thing which we have to worry about if we participate in that is uh, you have to kind of come up with uh, your own compute. Kaggle, the nice thing is you can use the Kaggle platform itself for up to 30 hours a week. Uh, and a few of us, myself, Steve, Mehol, and uh, have subscription to Colab. So we kind of tend to use Colab. That's one way that you can sidestep, but even then, you know, Kaggle provides you pretty good compute and it's sometimes easier if the data size is big, but the data size for all the three competitions on Kaggle this time is fairly small. So right. it should be trivial to get the data out of there and into Colab and then uh, yeah, run your notebooks on Colab and then just submit to Kaggle from there. If you are using mm -hmm. Kaggle, the main hurdle about uh, the satellite one, although that might be an interesting one in the 
future too if we don't choose it this time is because we haven't done anything with satellite imagery uh, as a domain and it'd be interesting uh, to so like normally that, uh, do, do, do you normally even when you are participating in cargo do you normally train your models in cola uh yes and no um when we do that is if uh, typically when uh, Steve or I have done that is um, it, if the data is easily moved, meaning it's small size and does, you know it's not like 200 gig, then it's easy to move to collab and then um, uh, do all your editing, all your trials. Um, because of the limitation of 30 hours of compute time on GPUs that's available on Kaggle, although I would say um, at least in many instances, I've not, uh, and with the recent changes in Colab, uh, where they allow you to edit without using compute time, I mean, you can just um, do the editing without actually getting charged for using the compute. And you can just, you, you know, sub, if you submit you can edit notebooks all you want without incurring any kind of uh, compute charge against the 30 hours and you only it only counts submissions that run towards the 30 hours and if that's the case at least i haven't for any of the computations run into um you get about 30 hours of gpu usage 30 to 40 hours a week and i have not run okay. into too much problem using that so it's more of a convenient thing um to if the data is small enough then you need not even log into kaggle and all that you can just do everything on collab and you can just move the data once and you can do all the experiments you want in collab but um in some competitions the data for example the last one we did on medical imaging eventually steve moved it on by uh, moved it over to Colab for other reasons after um, converting the data to smaller size. But uh, before that, or at least a couple of us stuck on Kaggle primarily because the data was too among us to move to Colab. So that decision is very much bound up with the size of the data. And typically, I have not found the need to do it and also the other thing is it's easier if you're on Kaggle to attach various um, data, various um, other um, artifacts you may generate. Like you can post process the data, store it as, um, I forget the term now, but uh, you know, store it as an input into or as an output and then bring it in as an input into a subsequent notebook. Uh, and that kind of stuff is easily done on Kaggle. So there are some good reasons why you may want to stick to Kaggle. The main major limitation of why people don't do that is because there is a limited compute of about 30 hours or so. Yeah, um, so personally, I, I only have um, the free version of Colab, so Actually, I prefer the opposite, which is to um, do most of the compute in cargo. And, and in fact, I think with the um, the satellite uh, image competition, the external one, I was thinking like uh, if the data set is really large, then it can probably be uploaded uh, as um, multiple cargo data sets, right? And that only needs to yeah. be done once and be shared with like, by all the team members, and then everyone can sort of plug them in. Yeah, so that's, you know, that's, and I haven't looked at how the size, unfortunately, I think even to look at the size, they make you register for the competition. And I just okay. didn't uh, bother to do it last week. Um, and then there is one other, uh, there's the, flu prediction uh, competition on this other platform um, that also I think uh, Yuri had uh, posted let me see whether that I posted that uh, yeah that's on driven data 
and that's another one which where the, at least I looked at the data size and the data size is reasonable. So that's something else, and that is also somewhat time series related. So um, that might be another one we could do. Um, yeah, as an option. Is this the so driven data kind of approach? I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, which competition are you talking about? That's the, the one which um, it's posted on Slack. Uh, it's under the heading of uh, driven data platform competitions. And then if you click on it, you'll see that uh, there's a four month. Uh, there are two competitions which are in the four month kind of time frame when they come to an end. And one of them is. Um, it's again a time series prediction kind of uh, competition called. Uh, let me get the name of it. It's a uh, flu shot learning and predict H1N1 and seasonal flu vaccine. So it's a okay. uh, predict, it's a competition where you have to predict. Uh, based on certain characteristics of people that have been collected, how likely they are to get an H1N1 vaccine or uh, and get a seasonal flu vaccine. So it's like basically predicting one or zero for two columns, and the two columns are how likely are it, is the identified uh, person. Uh, you know, they have some. IDs for people. So for each ID, predict whether the person is likely to take a shot, in which case it's a H1N1 shot, uh, in which case the value will be one, and if not zero, and same thing for seasonal flu vaccine based on like 30 odd characteristics about the person that have been collected. Yeah. So that one seems yeah. interesting. It's about four months left. The other aspect mm -hmm. to the Kaggle competitions that uh, are relevant is how long and typically my experience is you know if it's in the two to three even four is a little bit stretching it but it may be okay because by the time we get going it might take a couple of weeks to a month but um, two to three months is the time period that we have taken to kind of really get into the competition analyze the data and figure out some good approaches and then begin to assess performance and results and things. Uh, anything yeah. short of that, I think is, uh, you know, we're not likely to, because people have other things that they do during the week. So there's quite a bit of challenge of spending time uh, on this and it takes um, time to get going and get into the competition, become familiar with the data and begin to see some patterns and some good approaches and all that kind of stuff. So I think between two and four months is about a good remaining time frame. So the Kaggle competitions that I'm talking about, I think each of them have about two months left at least. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of them the uh, ends at the end of December. The Crypto one, I think, ends mid-Jan, which gives us a full three months from now. So I think, uh, you know, those, as well as the flu shot learning one, should all fit in the timeline quite well. So I'll mm -hmm. post my comments uh, about these uh, on Slack and uh, let people know um, to kind of chime in on what they're preference uh, weigh in with your preference as well and then you know starting next week maybe if by the time they um, we would have decided on which one to pick and then we can focus on that one um and i was wondering like do you think people might be missing this call today because um uh, like if they're in europe um i think the time switched uh i think yeah I don't, one hour yeah, that's or... what I was uh, thinking. But okay. uh, usually Steve is pretty 
regular or he lets me know if he is missing it eh? but uh, invariably during the time change we have this issue of oh time has changed i was thinking it's an hour earlier or an hour later and it kind of throws everybody off for a week or so and okay. yeah we don't change in the us until tomorrow so in fact i need right. to probably post uh, something i have another uh, group study group tomorrow that i lead and i probably should post saying hey with the time change remember that we'll be doing that an hour later than otherwise the case so uh-huh. okay um, that's probably why yeah and so yeah. like uh, so, for me uh, personally Europe has I... already changed time uh, i assume right uh y- yeah i think so um yeah so i i I'm, just want to mention that my personal preference is for a uh, uh competition on on the cargo platform because i think there's like a lot more engagements on there so, so for example you can look at um like other people's discussions um and their notebooks to you know to get started yeah no that's that's well, i mean we have yeah. so far been um we haven't chosen any competition outside of cabgo so far so i continue to think that will probably be uh, likely the choice but uh, you know at the same time if there's something very interesting that people want to consider then it, i'm open to that but yes it's highly yeah, likely absolutely. that we'll continue to do because there's also a lot more interaction and um comments and um uh, and in general the computing is free is the biggest uh, advantage to sticking with as well as you know the uh, results and other things are pretty timely and quick so i don't have experience with the other platforms so i can't speak to how good or bad they mm-hmm. are in that uh, sense but uh, yeah so i think we'll probably end up there anyway yeah i've never done a time series competition before either so i would have mind uh, trying one out um, yeah i yeah. have no clue so that how to tackle it likely to be what at least a couple of us who have done other things would uh, probably like to do just because we have tried our hands with the others and so we may be more interested in trying a time series that we haven't done before so that might be of interest yeah okay um, great thanks for okay. joining today and i'll post a quick uh, summary on slack and invite people to chime in on their choices so we can kind of get going with whatever our choice is next week. Okay. Thank you. Sounds good. Thanks. See you.